Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is your Wawa Girl here. Uh, my name is Tara. For those of you that are new, welcome, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up on my videos and hit the notification bell so that when, when I make new videos, um, you'll be the first to know. So for many of you that has been following me, um, I did have a stroke and a mini heart attack within weeks of each other so forgive me if my speech is not and um i am very numb so if you see me doing this with my hands it's nothing weird or crazy it's just because um it's aggravating as hell from here to here right here and i can feel it where it stops this is all numb Oh, God, it feels really bad, too. Um, but, yeah, anyway, um, I'm doing this video tonight on Dante Wright because I noticed something in the original, original footage that we saw, okay? And God, so rest in peace. Poor kid taken away so young, just like so many others. And um, he did not have to die. He did not have to die. But if you listen to... The first initial video that came out after um, Kimberly Potter shot him. She said, oh shit, I shot him. The officer to the left of him said, oh well. Now it's edited out. I wonder why. He should have been fired though. Um, but yeah, if... if um, like, like in the George Floyd videos, like, we've only seen a few videos. Now the trial's going on, we're seeing more and more videos of it. Um, but yeah, so in in this particular video that came out with the police um, body cam, it shows her holding her weapon on him for a while before she even said taser, 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 right? Um, she had enough time to look at her weapon and say, oh shit, you know, we host her, grab her taser. She did not for whatever reason. And like, now for me, I don't remember the taser all being all yellow. So now there, yeah, there's a big difference that you can't see this, like you're holding your weapon, it's in front of you, I can see my hands right now. And I can see that it's not yellow, it's black. So that means I'm holding my weapon. She had, she said, I'm gonna tell you, all that time, all that time, you're telling me you're not looking down to see that that's a gun? And taser, 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 and she shoots. And she's like, oh shit, I shot him. And the cop next to her goes, oh well. another black one down let's go find some more basically that's what he's saying they don't know if he's actually been shot or she well she knew that she shot him yeah they don't know if he's gonna die of his injury they don't know if he's anything's going on because yes he got frightened all these cops are approaching him and he is initial Instinct was to take off and try to make it home. That never happened. He wasn't going for a weapon or anything because his hands were on his steering wheel. He was just trying to bounce. Now, this is where the cops are fucked up because all of them motherfuckers look like they're veteran cops, like they've been on the force for some years, not like any newbies or anything like that. When you have to deal with somebody that has a warrant, this is what you're supposed to do, right? Just like I told my son, I'm going to come back to that. Well, she, I think I talked about it in the George Floyd video. But anyway. Go to the driver's side and say, hey, you know what? Um, I got to talk to you about something. It's kind of personal. Um, sit about the car for a moment. One cop. Just one cop got to do it. Everybody else on the sides or whatever it is. They get him to the back of the car. They say, hey, look. 
We ran your license and you got a warrant. You know, what is this about? That, make him comfortable to be like, okay, you know, are they trying to help me or whatever it is? Because it's a misdemeanor freaking warrant. They can be like, I tell you what, we're going to take you down and we're going to try to get this all sorted out. Because, I mean, it's been sitting there for a year and you got to deal with it somehow, some way, at some t- point. And then handcuff him, whatever the case. If he takes off, at least he's not taking off in the car to where he'll take off thinking all these cops are trying to get him and put somebody else's life in danger or kill everybody in the car by accident or whatever the case may be, or getting shot and not tasered. But in this video, she said, oh shit, I shot him. And the other cop said, oh well. Now, today, it was on all day yesterday. Today, they cut it off right after she says, oh, shit, I shot him. So somebody needs to get that that um, that video. That cop needs to be fired. Because of mentality like that, that's why nobody trusts cops anymore. Like my son, when he was in Georgia, he went to drop off his girlfriend. He's a student. He's a college student. Um, on a two-lane highway, okay? Just nonstop traffic. In this place, he said, Mom, there's a lot of cars. There's a cop that pulled over somebody. And my son can't slam on the brakes because there are cars behind him. So it would have been a pileup. Okay? But... He slowed down enough to go around the officer. Next thing you know, he's getting pulled over because there's oncoming cars. First of all, deputy, what the fuck are you doing on the driver's side of somebody's car on a two-lane fucking highway? How many cops got hit like that? Wasn't that the whole new thing that you guys did and you're supposed to approach people on the passenger side when you're pulling them over? But he didn't hit you. He didn't roll over your feet. You were fine, but you chased him and pulled him over. Now, okay, my son is pulled over in park, having a connection because he's never been pulled over before. So he's trying to figure out why the cop pulled him over. So the cop said, you almost hit me. My son's like, what? No. He's like, I went over. His his tire was on the, the, the line or whatever it was. He said, I went over far enough. And he's like, but there was an oncoming car. He's like, you had enough time to pull in front of that car. That car wouldn't hit you. How the fuck you know that? If my son almost killed you, that means you were turning around, running back to your car. How would you know that that car was far enough? People do shit on spite. People speed up or they're talking on their phone and speeding up and they do shit. You don't know that he could. My son could have had a car accident, a head on collision with somebody else. God forbid my son died, somebody else died. What the fuck are you going to tell me? Well, he didn't run me over, but I figured I was going to chase him anyway to tell him that he should have moved all the way over into that lane, into oncoming traffic. So... My son got a ticket for six hundred something dollars. Now, when the cop is walking off, my son grabs his cell phone to call me to tell me what just happened. The cop turns around, looks through his window, and says, "Oh, you got your cell phone in your in your hand now," and gives him another ticket. So now he's racked up close to eight hundred dollars in tickets, two tickets, eight hundred dollars, and he's a college student who's never had a ticket in his life. So yeah, cops do some fucked up shit. They do. They really do. Um, All I can tell you guys, when you get pulled over, and if you know you have a warrant, Regardless of what it is. Just say, hey, look. Matter of fact, also make sure that you're recording. You're being pulled over. 
Um, so if anything happens, you can refer back to that. And also, if you have like another phone or just buy another phone for like the purpose of, you know, just being safe and recording and throw that one, like grab it, put it on real quick and um, drop it in the side of your car door. Because if the cop knows that he's being, what do you call it? Um, hold on, Sasha. That he's being recorded, and if he's going to arrest you, then he's probably going to delete your recording, especially if you don't have a password or anything on your phone. Um, so, yeah, they do shit like that. Um, just go to jail. Go to jail. Deal with your warrant. The reason why I say that is because your family can visit you in jail. They can't visit you if you're dead. If a cop comes to your window, spits on you, and call you a nigger, sir, do you have a ticket for me? Take it, wipe your face, go home, and pray that he crash and burn. That's it. Because you may never see the light of day again. I know. We have rights. We do. But apparently they don't give a shit. And we're more likely to die than a white person. I tell my kids all the time, we are black people living in a white man's world. It's always been like that. Living in, uh, growing up in a white man's world, it, it's always been like that. Um, and nothing's gonna change. If it didn't fucking change from Rodney King, it's never gonna change, ever. Ever, ever. Babies are going to continue to get shot and killed by police. The other day I got pulled over. Um, well, I won't say the other day, but it was a few years back because my kids are um, the little ones. My oldest one, and he's on, he's um, 29. And he lives in Miami. Um, Jamie, James, and Jasmine, they're... 22, 21, and 18. Jasmine would be 19, yeah, in September. Um, I had those three in the car with me. I, we were going to go school shopping at the pavilion. And I got pulled over because I was the only blackface. So I was being profiled. And I, shit, I was even looking at it. I'm driving up the lot and I'm looking into cars, every stop sign, because I live in a predominantly white little town. Um, so I get pulled over because, you know, we're black. And he comes behind me. He was going on the highway. And then he saw me. And he had already shot past me. Um, so I made sure the kids put on their seatbelts. And as we're getting closer, almost to the pavilion, he gets off that lane, that right lane. Because that right lane, you cannot um, go straight on it. It goes to a point where you only go up the ramp. So he gets off that street, like, right before the ramp and comes right behind us. As soon as he saw me, I was like, I was like here we go. And um, I get pulled over at the 7-Eleven. And I told my kids, I said, if you have to fart, you better fucking hold it in. Don't fart, don't talk, don't say a fucking word. Just look straight. That's it. Next thing you know, one of y'all pass gas. And he talking about shots fired and spray up this whole fucking car. I'm like, I just want to go shopping and go home. And he came up to my window talking about, oh, I took off my seatbelt to get my license and registration. And Poppy unhooks his. I'm like, what are you doing? And then he clicks it back. So now, by him seeing that, he has a reason to pull me over. Because he lied right in front of my face talking about my son didn't have a seatbelt on. I said, you're lying. My son had, he said, no, he didn't. He just clicked it. I said, no, 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 no. When you shot past us down on Dunlawton in Nova, um, we saw you. And I made sure everybody had their seatbelt on. When you got pulled over, you... Um, 
you got off the ramp when you saw black people in the car. You followed me and you ran my place and none of my license is expired. It's not like I don't fucking have one. It's just, it's expired. And I still don't know where the fucking DMV is around here. Just moved to Port Orange. And he was like, oh, yeah, whatever, whatever. You're trying to have a seatbelt. I was like, look, just give me the fucking ticket, man, because I'm tired. I want to finish my shopping and, and go. That was it. I didn't have an attitude, but I was just, I was just like disgusted. And I was just like, um, that's fine. Just write me a ticket. Let me go. So he wrote me a ticket for not the expired license, but my, for my son having his, not having his seatbelt on. Isn't that some shit? And he had his seatbelt on. He just clicked it because he saw me take mine off and he thought it was okay. And it wasn't. But hey, we're alive and breathing. That was a few years ago. Now they're adults and they could just learn from it. I said, you see what just happened, right? I got a ticket for you not um, clicking your seatbelt. You see? And the entire time you had it on. All right. Just remember, one day y'all going to start driving. So make sure you have your seatbelt on. Okay. But yeah, I had that ticket to pay. Can I tell you from 1998? That's why I love Miami. Miami, they don't discriminate. They don't fuck around because Miami is full of everybody. Haitian, American, um, West Indian, Chinese, um, everything. None of that shit go on down there. I've never fucking pulled over because being black. But cops do some fucked up shit and they do profile. And it's a part of our world because we're black. So they want to make arrests. Um, they want to kill people. Um, I would even go as far as rape. But yeah, they do. They they do fucked up shit like that. And a lot of cops sleep with prostitutes. Mhm. But anyway, getting back to let's try to get off the subject. But if you guys go into um. I don't know if you heard it the time when I heard it, but he did say, oh, well, oh, well. And because of mentality like that, that cop needs to be off the street because he will probably end up shitting one of us one day. Um, yeah. And, you know, um, the world wasn't, I mean, it, it was fucked up, yeah. But having Donald Trump in office made it even worse, a hundred times worse. He allowed all the racists to come out. He allowed all the racism everywhere. So for black and uh, Hispanic people to talk about, oh, I love Trump, I love this, I love that. What the fuck for? It was your Spanish people that he stopped at the motherfucking border. I don't give a fuck if you're Puerto Rican, they're Mexican, you're Dominican, they're Mexican, you're Honduran, they're Mexican. They're still Spanish. They're still Hispanic. They speak Spanish. So it was your people that got detained at the border and locked away in some fucking barn like they're fucking animals. Their children taken out of their arms that can't even find their parents today. So I don't know how you are so pro-Trump. There's an asshole down the street from me that has a big sign in his um, thing. And I used to drive there every day because there's beautiful, these beautiful big dogs. I think one's a great day and one's something else. And they're always doing something outside with them, like in the swimming pool or whatever, or, you know, little kiddie pools. They bring them out and the dogs run up and down. Um, now, I don't even look over there. He has a big um, flagpole up that says, fuck Biden. No, fuck Trump. Trump is a dick. Trump is the worst fucking president that ever came into office. That's why I hope Biden saged an entire White House and got new chairs and new walls and new beds. Ugh. Me, personally, I would never sleep on that shit after Trump's left on it. Fucking nasty motherfucker. Anyway. Um... Yeah, and for black people like 50 Cent and a few other ones, um, 
is that tax break? Like, I mean, are you that desperate? Are you like broke or I mean, what? You can't make a, a concert and make that money back that you have to kiss his ass. That's why I don't listen to your music. My kids don't even listen to your music anymore. And that's a damn shame. Yeah, it just takes that one thing. You all pro-Trump. I hope your record sales are pro-Trump. You know why people listening to you. Um, so basically, you had, all your money was coming from the black communities. And the wannabe blacks. But anyway, I just be talking shit because like... I get fed up when I, I'm really upset when I hear things. That's why I have my channel. So I could talk and I could say whatever the fuck I want to say. And if you guys don't like it, you don't have to watch me. And like I said, when you make um, stupid comments, because I've gone through this with um, a few of Trump's people that'll, email, that'll um, send me comments and telling me this and telling me that and... Sometimes I just indulge because I'm bored and I'm quarantined and I ain't got shit else to do. Um, but other times I just ignore him because, like, look, first of all, I was your president, not mine. I didn't fucking vote for him. He became president by accident. And if I knew that was going to happen, hell, I should have ran. The fuck? Um, we're not even going to talk about Kanye because his head was all up in, that, in Trump's ass. Um, but all these black men and women and children that are dying at the hands of police, they all get a slap on the wrist. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I have never, I don't even know if there was a trial for Tamir Rice, wondering what's going on with that. Um, Breonna Taylor, I think her her mom got a payout. Uh, Freddie Gray, he got a payout, but they never said what happened to the police officers. They arrest them because they're fear of riots. And they get acquitted. So this is like an ongoing thing because they're police officers and because they're veterans and they don't lose their pension. Um, this is what they do. Look at the charges. Um, Chauvin is getting unintentional murder. No, he meant to murder um, Mr. Floyd. Or she would have got off his neck a long fucking time ago and been like, breathe, motherfucker, breathe. No. And as a cop, he's supposed to start compressions on him. But no. He wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill him because there's some ongoing beef with them too. And he was so happy when he saw that he was going to arrest George Floyd. And in that video, too, a lot of people missed when they said, like, oh, well, Floyd didn't, um, we didn't know each other that well. We didn't know each other. I didn't know him, whatever Chauvin was saying. That's bullshit. Because I don't care if you bounce with somebody for two days. There's going to be a time when both y'all going to have to work together, either on the same guy or whatever it was. Or so you know him. But what people don't realize he knows him well enough to know that Mr. Floyd is claustrophobic because when Mr. Floyd was being put in that car, he was saying to them, I'm claustrophobic, I'm claustrophobic. Ask him, he knows that. That's what he knows. And when he was told, should we turn him over on his side? He was like, no, this motherfucker gonna die today. Shit. This is my chance today. Knowing that like, all of them, seven people in the crowd that they feared for their lives, holding up cell phone, um, holding up their cell phones, taking videos. He knew it was going to be on TV. He didn't give a shit. Hell, he's already like, what, 90 years old? 
his life is over. But that beef that he had with Mr. Floyd, that's what's going to make him, that's like, I can't even put this. That's how he's going out. He was destined to kill Mr. Floyd that day. George was not going to go see his family. And for a grown ass man to be yell, like you leave that shit to kids. Like, you know, when something happened, the first person they call like, mama. For a grown ass man, Mr. Floyd, to be calling out his mama, something was going on. He knew he was going to die. This man was not going to let him go. He was telling his mama goodbye. And look what happened right after that. Well, his brother got married on the 24th. He died on the 25th. And his mama died on the 30th. She couldn't handle it. Seeing her son die by the hands of a police officer that was on his neck. 200 fucking pounds on his neck. Because Chauvin is what? 100 and something? And then he got... The weight of his gun, the weight of his body armor, the weight of his belt, the baton. He got all that weight on him. Yep. Dante Wright. They could have let him go and caught him another day. Or the righteous thing to do would have been like, bro, let me talk to you for a second. I want to talk in front of whoever you got in the car. But look, just come out for a minute. We'll talk. And then we're good to go. Lie to him, bullshit, make him comfortable, and say, hey, listen, you got a warrant. What's that all about? Make him comfortable. And just be like, look, son, you can run. We'll catch you. We'll tase you, whatever it is. Hell, we'll probably just let you go and deal with it yourself and turn yourself in or whatever. Bullshit until... He feels comfortable and just be like, look, maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's something you just take care of. This is what we're going to do. We'll arrest you and um, take you down and then see if you can get it um, taken care of. That's it. But she had enough time before she yelled taser, taser, taser to look at her weapon And to see that that was not her taser. Maybe she wanted to go out like that too. I have no idea. But in that video, the original video that we saw, she said, oh shit, I shot him. And the other cop said, oh well, he needs to be off the streets. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with this video. Um, Yeah, you guys need to get that to somebody ASAP because that officer needs to be taken off the streets pronto because he will end up killing another black person (sighs) heartbreaking my video is probably going to cut me off in the middle of this so i'm just going to say good night be safe wear your mask remember covid is real okay guys this is no joke out there still killing people and um you hand sanitize put your mask on in your car take it off when you get back in Good night, and I will definitely be back tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll figure out something with this do. <laughs> All right, guys, take care, and I'll see you in my next videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe.